Part of speech. Part of speech is a term used in grammar to describe the function of a word in a sentence. There are eight parts of speech, nouns, pronouns, verbs, adjectives, adverbs, prepositions, conjunctions, and interjections. Each part of speech has its own unique characteristics and functions in a sentence. For example, nouns are words that represent people, places, things, or ideas. Pronoun is a word that is used instead of a noun or noun phrase. Verbs are words that describe an action or state of being. Adverbs are words that describe or modify verbs, adjectives, or other adverbs. Adjectives are words that describe or modify nouns. Prepositions are words that show the relationship between a noun or pronoun and other words in a sentence. Conjunctions are words that connect words, phrases, or clauses. Interjections are words that express strong emotions. Noun Noun is a part of speech refers to words that are used to name persons, things, animals, places, ideas, or events. Examples Tom Hanks is very versatile. Tom Hanks is noun, refers to a name of a person. Dogs can be extremely cute. Dogs is noun, because it names an animal. It is my birthday. The word birthday is a noun which refers to an event. There are different types of nouns, proper, common, concrete, abstract, count, non-count, collective. Proper. The proper nouns always start with a capital letter and refers to specific names of persons, places, or things. Examples, Tom, John, Mary Bella, Albert's Pizza. Common. The common nouns are the opposite of proper nouns. These are just generic names of persons, things, or places. Examples, car, pizza shop, home, man, kid. Concrete. The concrete noun is refers to noun which you can perceive through your five senses, like seen, touched, heard, smelled, or tasted. Examples, folder, sand, board. Abstract. The abstract nouns are those which you can't perceive through your five senses. Examples, happiness, grudge, bravery. Count. Count noun refers to anything that is countable and has a singular and plural form. Examples, kitten, video, ball. Non-countable. Non-countable nouns refers to nouns that we cannot count, like rice, flour, water. They need to have counters to quantify them. Examples, 2 kilo of rice, a cup water, 100 gram of flour. Collective. The collective noun refers to a group of persons, animals, or things. Example, faculty, group of teachers, class, group of students, committee, group of people. Pronoun A pronoun is a part of a speech which functions as a replacement for a noun. It is often used to avoid the need to repeat the same noun again and again. There are eight types of pronouns. They are personal, demonstrative, indefinite, interrogative, possessive, relative, reflexive, and intensive. Personal pronoun. Personal pronouns are used to replace the names of people or things. There are three group. First person, I, we. Second person, you. And third person, he, she, it, and they. Demonstrative pronouns. Demonstrative pronouns are used to point to specific people or things, such as this, that, these and those. Indefinite pronouns. Indefinite pronouns refer to people or things in general, like anyone, anything, everyone, and everything. Interrogative pronouns. Interrogative pronouns are used to ask questions. They include who, whose, what, whom, and which. Possessive pronouns. Possessive pronouns show ownership or possession. They include mine, yours, his, hers, its, theirs, and ours. Relative pronouns. Relative pronouns are used to connect clauses or phrases together, such as who, whom, whose, that, and which. Reflexive pronouns. Reflexive pronouns refer back to the subject of the sentence. They include myself, yourself, himself, herself, itself, ourselves, yourselves, and themselves. 
Intensive pronouns. Intensive pronouns are used for emphasis, such as myself, yourself, himself, herself, itself, ourselves, yourselves, and themselves. Adjective. An adjective is a part of speech that can be used to describe or provide more information about a noun or pronoun that acts as the subject in a sentence. Adjectives can be found after the verb or before the noun it modifies to. It can specify the quality, the size, and the number of nouns or pronouns. Here are types of adjectives. Descriptive, numeral, quantitative, demonstrative, interrogative, possessive, proper, and comparative. Descriptive adjective. Descriptive adjectives are used to describe nouns and pronouns. They show the quality or kind of the noun or pronoun like beautiful, large, small, fast, tired, hungry, etc. For example, Mom is very tired today. She draws two amazing pictures. The car is moving very fast. Numeral adjective. Numeral adjectives show how many persons or things are meant. This adjective represents numeral value like few, second, eight, some, etc. For example, there is no garbage in the bin. I wrote many letters to you. Every child is special. Quantitative adjective. Adjectives of quantity show how much quantity of a thing is meant, like all, no, few, many, any, some, each, either, every, whole, sufficient, most, none and little. For example, I have only few balloons to decorate the room. There are ten pencils in my box. Demonstrative adjective. Demonstrative adjective is used to identify or express the relative position of a noun, they are, this, that, these, those. The demonstrative adjective in a sentence will come just before a noun or pronoun and tell you which one it is specifically modifying. For examples, can you please give me that red color pen? This is my favorite dress. These people are new in our area. Those are your books. Interrogative adjectives. Interrogative adjectives refer to a way that WH questions like what, which, when, whose are used to ask questions in the sentence. For example, what dessert would you like? Whose book is this? Which dresses are you buying today? When did he get married? Possessive adjectives. Possessive adjectives are used to express who owns or possess something. This is used in front of a noun, like my, our, your, his, her, its, and their. For examples, I am looking after her baby. My mother is a very kind. I do not want to talk to your father. Our uncle told us to do our homework. Proper adjectives. Proper adjectives are formed from proper nouns and begin with a capital letter, like British, Chinese, Cambodian, Thai, Indian, etc. For example, this is Thai products. I love Chinese foods. We usually use British English for speaking in this country. Comparative adjective. A comparative adjective is an adjective used to compare two people or things that demonstrates a high degree of equality than the other, such as taller, smarter, slower, etc. For example, my brothers are all younger than you. We moved from here to a bigger city. Tom needs to get faster car for the race. Now, we finished our lesson about adjective. And the table below tell you briefly about type of adjective. Verb. The verb is a word that shows an action, physical or mental, or state of being of the subject in a sentence. It is the part of a sentence that tells us what the subject performs. Here are the different types of verbs in English grammar. They are action, linking, auxiliary, modal, and phrasal verbs. The action verb. Action verbs describe physical or mental actions that someone or something can do, such as run, jump, think, and laugh. For example, I work at a factory. Cats chase mice. We listen to the woman's amazing story. The linking verb. Linking verbs connect the subject of a sentence to a noun or adjective that describes it. 
such as is, was, were, appear, and seem. For example, Mike is a great dancer. That gold watch looks expensive. Suddenly, the mall got really crowded. The auxiliary verb. Auxiliary verbs, also called helping verbs, are used with main verbs to show tense or mood, such as be, do, and have. For example, the musician has performed in concerts all over the world. My cat is getting slow in her old age. The modal verb. Modal verbs express ability, possibility, permission, or obligation. Such as can, could, may, might, must, shall, should, and will. For example, you should bring these old things play outside the store. We may be late for the meeting, the traffic is too bad. I would go to the movies if I wasn't busy for today. The phrasal verb. Phrasal verbs are made up of a verb plus one or more particles, such as prepositions or adverbs. Like, look up, turn on, and give up. For example, the shop owner closed down his store. Tom loves to show off his baseball trophies. My mother is me to give up my bad habits. Adverb. The adverbs are used to describe verbs, adjectives, or another adverbs in the sentence, such as really, very well, badly, yesterday, often, everywhere, and etc. The different types of adverbs are adverbs of manner, adverbs of time, adverbs of place, adverbs of degree, adverbs of frequency, and conjunctive adverbs. Adverb of manner. Adverb of manner refers to how something happens or how an action is done. For example, Annie danced gracefully. The word gracefully tells how Annie danced. Adverb of time. The adverb of time states when something happens or when it is done. Example, she came yesterday. The word yesterday tells when she came. Adverb of place. The adverb of place tells something about where something happens or where something is done. Example, of course, I looked everywhere. The adverb everywhere tells where I looked. Adverb of degree. The adverb of degree states the intensity or the degree to which a specific thing happens or is done. Example, the child is amazingly talented. The adverb amazingly answers the question, to what degree is the child talented? Adverbs of frequency. The adverb of frequency is used to denote how often an action is happening. Example, I never eat out, due to the food is too expensive. The adverb never answers the question, how often I eat outside. Conjunctive adverbs. The conjunctive adverbs are used to connect one clause to another. They are also used to show sequence, contrast, cause and effect, and other relationships. For example, she went into the store, however, she didn't find anything she wanted to buy. The adverb, however, connects both clauses together. Preposition The preposition is a word or group of words used before a noun, pronoun, or noun phrase to show direction, time, place, location. Type of preposition Here is the types of preposition, direction, time, place, location, and spatial relationships. Preposition of direction the preposition of direction refer to a direction, like to, in, into, on, and onto. For example, she drove to the store. Drive on the grass and park the car there. Prepositions of time. The preposition of time refer to one point in time, use the prepositions in, at, and on. We also others prepositions as, since, for, by, during, with, to refer to extended time. For example, he reads in the evening. I go to work at 8 o'clock. He does laundry on Wednesdays. He will be in Toronto for three weeks. Prepositions of place. The prepositions of place refer to a place such as in, at, on, and inside. For example, she was waiting at the corner. The plates were on the shelf above the cups. The garage is opposite the house. Prepositions of location. 
The prepositions of location refer to a location, such as in, at, and on. For example, they live in the country. She will find him at the library. There is a lot of dirt on the window. Prepositions of spatial relationships. The prepositions of spatial relationships refer to a spatial relationship, like above, across, against, ahead of, along, among, around, behind, below, beneath, beside, between, from, in front of, etc. For example, the post office is across the street from the grocery store. The kids are hiding behind the tree. Walk toward the garage and then turn left. Conjunctions The conjunctions are words that link other words, phrases, or clauses together. Such as, and, but, for, nor, or, so, etc. For example, She likes cooking and eating, but she doesn't like washing dishes afterward. Hannah is clearly exhausted, yet she insists on dancing till dawn. The type of conjunction There are several different types of conjunctions that do various jobs within sentence structures. They are coordinating, correlative, subordinating conjunction. Coordinating conjunctions The coordinating conjunctions allow you to join words, phrases, and clauses that equal grammatical rank in a sentence. Such as for, and, nor, but, or, yet, and so. We call this fanboys. For example, she would like pizza or a salad for breakfast. Mary didn't have much money, but she ate out every day. Please make notice that comma when a coordinating conjunction is joining two independent clauses. Subordinating conjunctions. The subordinating conjunctions, also known as subordinators, these conjunctions join dependent clauses to independent clauses. Like, because, since, although, as, while, though, whereas, etc. For example, before he leaves, make sure his room is clean. He drank two cups of tea because he was thirsty. Because he was thirsty, he drank two cups of tea. Please make notice that if the dependent clause comes first, Use a comma before the independent clause. Correlative conjunction. The correlative conjunctions are pairs of conjunctions that work together. Such as either or, neither nor, not only but also, etc. For example, she's not only beautiful, but she's also clever. Neither the black dress nor the gray one looks right on me. Interjection. The interjections refer to the words or phrases that express a strong feeling or emotion. They are usually followed by an exclamation mark. Such as, hooray, ouch, wow, oh my god, whoa. For example, hooray, we won the match. Ouch, that must have hurt. Hey, I said enough. Wow, that is a beautiful dress indeed. Oh my god. That was unexpected. Whoa. That guy is fantastic. More examples below are about the comment interjections that use in the sentence. Alas. Alas is used to express sadness or pity. Like, alas. That was so unfortunate. Ah. Ah is used to express realization or surprise. Like, ah, the magic show at the end was a total surprise. Eh? A is used to inquire or ask for something to be repeated. Like, eh? I didn't quite get it. Can you please repeat it? Dear. Dear is used to express pity or surprise. Like, oh dear. I feel really bad for what happened to you. Hey. Hey is used to express surprise or call for attention. Like, hey. Look out for the car. Hooray. Hooray is used to express joy. Like, hooray. We finally cleared the test. Oh. Oh is used to express pain or surprise. Like, oh. I have a really bad headache. Ouch. Ouch is used to express pain. Like, ouch. 
you stepped on my toes. Phew. Phew is used to express relief, exhaustion, disgust. Like, phew. That was an extremely long presentation. Ah. Uh. Ah uh is used to express hesitation. Like, ah. Uh. I don't think I want to be a part of this. Well. Well is used to introduce a remark. Like, well, what you just did was wonderful. Wow. Wow is used to express your admiration for something. Like, wow. Your new bike is amazing. Yippee. Yippee is used to express joy. Like, yippee. Tomorrow is a holiday. If you have any questions, please leave your comments in the comments section below. Thanks.